Hey there, Tiffany and Brad with Years of Years, and it's this day in Disney for January 25th. There we go. Moving right along. We'll be uh, in February before you know it. <laughs> and Valentine's Day. I know. Valentine's Day feels super close. Yeah, I always love Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Always makes me think of Our Lady and Tramp. But yes. today we're talking about two other dogs. Yes. So a today, right? <laughs> a lot of babies, a whole bunch of babies. <laughs> We're going back to 1961, and on this day, 101 Dalmatians was released. Amazing. Awesome film. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed um, this movie. I I love the art style for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's so, you know, 60s and fun, and the oh, music yeah. and the colors and everything. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting yeah for me it almost feels like Walt has like returned to form he's done a lot of fairy tales he's done a lot of that work but in his early like animations with like Mickey you had like jazz you had like fun you had like all this like contemporary like zaniness and yeah. it kind of comes well, back in well, 101 pretty, Dalmatians. He was pretty hands-off on this one though yeah. because he was full working on the parks and getting everything going for the Florida project and um, and so forth because this is 1961 and you know he passed away in 66 so yeah. um, by this time you know this is really about the animators yeah, and those nine old men or lots of lots more than that but some of the people that you might know like Clyde Geronimo, Hamilton Lust, Wolfgang Watt, uh, Reitherman they were the three directors on this and then um, it was really interesting so this was actually a book first, 1956. Uh, Dottie Smith wrote the book 101 Dalmatians, and in 57, Walt read it, and he loved it and wanted to make a film of it. And what's really cool to me is that she was hoping the whole time that Walt Disney would want to make wow. this into a movie. That's a different like that take awesome? on that story, and not having yes. to beg somebody <laughs> to adapt something. I'm like. Yes. Please, Mr. Disney. Yes, way better situation. And this is coming out, so prior to this movie, the film that came out before was Sleeping Beauty. And even though it is well-beloved, well done, a piece of art, it did not do well in the box office and it didn't make them money. So they needed something that was going yeah, to be successful. Yeah, I find that really interesting too because it kind of like yeah. speaks to one of the things that I noticed about the film. If you watch the original trailer, for 101 Dalmatians. The whole trailer like focuses on action and like the conflict like yeah. in the movie like with the burglars and with Deville like just really like a lot of high <laughs> action, yeah. you know? And I was thinking about it, it's like, well, who are they like marketing to? And we kind of are still in an area where there's not a lot of disposable income for children and for women. So they're like marketing to men. It's so like crazy, like they, <laughs> high action. There's no exactly. singing, there's no songwriter, there's no fashion, there's no like all the art style. Like the whole trailer focuses on action and like getting the father like into the theater. It's so very interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Maybe, yeah that, sounds, that sounds right. I mm. mean, uh, hitting a different dem demographic with all mm. those. Um, with the marketing, it's so unusual. Know, well, Princess movies too. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah, quite they're a like, few. well, we're not making <laughs> money with these princess movies. Hey, get the dads well, in there. Just and the they, one. Yeah. And Sleeping Beauty did make them money in the future. I of mean, course. it's a great film. We know that. Yeah. So anyway, Dis uh, Walt Disney actually want had so he loved the story. So he had Bill Pete come in and do the 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 screenplay or story or whatnot for the film. So he was able to take it from what Smith, Dottie Smith had done and make it ready for, you know, for animation and film. So, uh, interestingly enough, he, uh, said, Bill Pete said in his autobiography that he didn't know how to use a typewriter. So he used those, um, yellow oh, ledger carbon? pads, okay. just ledger, mm -hmm, like three, mm -hmm. he filled three of those, okay. uh, for the screenplay. So <laughs> he just wrote it by hand mm -hmm. and, um, then they, uh, Walt read it and then they had it typed up later. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I just thought it was kind of an interesting Absolutely. tidbit because, you know, to do great things doesn't always mean you always 
adapt to have technology. technology or understand mm -hmm. certain things, but you have the talent. And he obviously did, because it's a great story. He had to take some things out, like, um, well, he took out, Cruella in the book has a husband and a cat. <laughs> So that's Man. not um, wow. in there. <laughs> oh no, she was enabled. Yeah, and I think there was um, more than one. There was like a mother and then adopted mother, but they he made it all into one character, which was Perdita. And so you had Perdita and Pongo in their love story. And there was going to also be a whole like uh wedding thing but they took that out as yeah, well very yeah interesting. they claim that um so this was the beginning and early days of like the censor like bureaus and having films reviewed and they claimed that they felt religious like communities or conservative people would be offended by having animals participate in a spiritual um ceremony or maybe that other uh, people of other religions would be offended by oh. one specific religion oh yeah. very nice so they just nodded to it with um, okay. more formal clothing and stuff mm. instead of actually having very a good. wedding scene to keep it more and if you think about it i mean by then all the disney films were going worldwide so that's that mm. kind of makes sense yeah with global distribution yeah yeah, yeah. so Interestingly enough, in the animation side of this, they used, and I don't know if I fully have wrapped my head around what they were doing, but it was called, they used a new thing, a special pro process of why it works, um, suggested it, and it was called Xerox. <laughs> it's not like Xerox how we know it today. <laughs> You're like, uh, you don't know what Xerox, mm -hmm. no, not that kind of Xerox, but basically what it was is they modified a Xerox camera to transfer drawing, the drawings of animators directly to animation cells. So they had used this on Sleeping Beauty for um, the forest scene, so they had tried it, and they actually used it quite a bit for 101 Dalmatians, and it worked really well with repeating all those spots. Hmm. So it just sounds like the dark room started to shift away and they started to go to technology of this like Xerox copy. Like, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So it was really interesting. So, um, so Disney first, you know, like I said, used it with Sleeping Beauty and it was just like a progression of progress yeah. for, to make things easier and to make it less expensive. And so by making it less expensive, the, the movie actually did do well in the box office. They mm -hmm. made like, I think it was 14 million. So, but they, that was the box office. And so they actually made 6 million on it. So a, nice. pro a good profit. Yeah. But Ken Anderson was behind this whole Xerox thing. And unfortunately, Walt didn't love the art direction of this film. <laughs> he actually, in one of the meetings um, said that he didn't want to repeat that gosh darn film <laughs> hmm. Interesting. So, yeah I, and that's why I say I think he was very busy with other things you know so in yeah I guess there in the animation there is a lot of texture there is a lot of dirtiness like they have like the ash on the dogs and like dirt being thrown around a lot and kind of like a graininess to a lot of things like in the action scenes maybe maybe that's what it was maybe he didn't like it because it looked he said the Dirty. specific art direction, like the yeah. art style, he didn't like. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't. I'm not really sure. He didn't want to get away from. And it's funny because of what you were saying earlier, but he didn't want to get away from um, the fantasy element in his animated films, hmm. and that's what he stated. Interesting. And so Ken Anderson was like, he actually said, "Ken's never going to be an art director again." Whoa. <laughs> It's pretty so, firm. Pretty intense, but um, apparently, like right before he passed away, he said that Ken and him were interacting. He said he looked really sick, and I said, "Gee, it's great to see you, Walt." And he said, "You know that thing you did on Dalmatians." And he he didn't say anything else, but he just gave me this look, and I knew that all was forgiven. And his opinion maybe, um, his opinion maybe what I did on Dalmatians wasn't so bad. Uh, that was the last time I ever saw him. Then a few weeks later, I learned he was gone. So well, how wonderful that he had that peace had that and closure. Peace and mm. moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we love it's it today. Oh, and yeah. It's a great film. Wow. And the, the animators and everyone who worked on it were highly talented. Like I said, Walt wasn't fully invested in mm -hmm. the films. He was moving on to bigger and better things. Yeah. He had 
Epcot he swimming steps around back in, in his studio head. and says, what happened? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, what's going on? This yeah. isn't the direction I want these things. I yeah. want the, the fantasy. And, it, you know, fantasy was what it was all about. So, yes. understandably. But beloved <laughs> IP created so many movies that have come forth right. since it, live action right. and otherwise. And yeah. Really, just such a fabulous it's property. It's a great, great film. And yeah. I like it too because you do have so many princess movies, and this is more geared towards, you know, puppies and animals. And, you know, kids don't all like just princesses. Mm -hmm. Kids love animals they and do. they love pets and yeah. And, and it speaks to home and family and life and the yeah. domestic aspects of our life, not just the fantasy. But also, what kid wouldn't want to be surrounded by a hundred puppies? <laughs> that just sounds like so much fun. They're all cuddly and, you know, what parent would hate that? <laughs> this one. <laughs> but it's still, <laughs> it's a great film. So go have, put your spots on today and yeah. go celebrate 101 Dalmatians. I love it. I actually personally really love the art style of this film. Yeah. Um, I think even from the intro, it's, it's really well done. Go and watch so, it. Go even watch if you've it. seen it 101 times. Go watch those Sea Rocks Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect in black and white. Yeah, but thanks for coming along with us today. It was lots of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. And we will see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.